Hi, everybody. Okay, this is my review of 12 Years a Slave. Saw this movie um, about a week ago, actually. Went to see it on uh, New Year's Eve and just getting around to reviewing it now. Just haven't gotten around to it for various reasons. But here we go. Okay, so this movie was directed by Steve McQueen. Uh, he uh, <clears throat> He's a director who did uh, Shame with Michael Fassbender. Uh, Michael Fassbender was also in this movie. I will get to more about him later in this review. Uh, Shame was a movie about he he played this sex addict. He played a guy with um, a sex addiction and um, did so very well, actually. Um, very nice to look at, Michael Fassbender. Wow. Um, but anyway, um, yeah, so he did Shame, and he did another movie about a guy who was on a hunger strike. Uh, let me check, see if it's, I can find his filmography here. Uh, I don't want to take too much time here. I don't want to get off the topic. Uh, okay, I can't find it. But anyway, he did another movie about a guy who was in prison on a hunger strike, some British guy, I believe. And uh, yeah, so uh, now he has done this movie. Um, it's a true story about... Um, a black man named Solomon Northrup who lived in um, upstate New York, I believe it was. Oh my God, um, Saratoga, Saratoga, New York, I believe it was, and this was like 1841 or something. And at the time, this guy Solomon Northrup, who is played by Chiwetel Ejiofor, I believe that's how you pronounce his name, the actor who played the guy, who was really, really good. Um, anyway, he was like, um, he was like a member of the, he was like an everyday person. He was a freeman, even though he was black. And this was during like slavery times, I guess he'd either earned his freedom or, you know, escaped or whatever. And he was living as like an upper crust guy. He was a musician. He played the violin. Uh, he wore beautiful clothes. He had a family, he had a wife and kids, two kids. He lived like a, a normal life like any other, um, you know, upper class person would in those days. Uh, <clears throat> and then one day <clears throat> he's walking through the park. He, he had just sent his family off to on a trip somewhere. And, uh, he was walking through the park and he was approached by these two well-dressed guys who said, Oh, are you so-and-so? And he's like, yes, I'm Solomon Northrop. And they knew he was a musician. So they said they were members of this, like uh, a circus troupe or something or some kind of some kind of a traveling show and they wanted to offer him uh, a job for a couple of weeks performing in their, uh, in their show. Cause they knew he was a great musician and all this. So, um, you know, they're saying, Oh, we'll pay you this. We'll pay you that. They take him out to dinner. They're telling him all about this, you know, so-called gig, get him pissed drunk. He ends up like getting extremely inebriated and, um, and then through flashback, we see them kind of like, you know, carrying him to his room and stuff and lying him on the bed. And, and you know, they're saying to each other, you know, leave him there. There's nothing more we can do for him. And then uh, the next morning he wakes up and he's in chains. He's His hands are chained, his feet are chained, and he's in this like dark, dingy room. And then these two guys come in, <clears throat> two scruffy looking white guys, and... Um, you know, he's like, hey, like, what's going on here? Uh, I'm a free man. I have my papers. And they're like, well, show us your papers. Of course, he doesn't have them on him. And they're like, you know, you're nothing. You're an N-word. That's all you are. And you're you're our property. You're my property now, whatever. And um, I can't remember. I guess he protests about this. And then this one guy just beats the living crap out of him. And that is the basic theme of this movie. I mean, this movie was one of the most brutal, depressing, violent, uh, disgusting things I've seen, you know, in recent memory. It felt almost masochistic to watch this movie. I mean, what happens to this, what happened to this guy? And um, the title of the movie, 12 Years a Slave, I guess, obviously, he was in captivity for like 12 years. First, he ended up, he ended up being shipped off to some, um, actually, the first guy, his first owner, uh, was played by Benedict Cumberbatch, who I have not seen uh, in anything before that I can recall. Um, he was really good. He played uh, a really kind guy. He was a good guy. Um, 
I mean, just, I, there's so many indignities that you see in this movie happening to these poor people. Um, this one woman who uh, he gets shipped off with, she ends up being bought by this guy and having to leave her kids behind. And, of course, she's screaming. She's, like, you know, beside herself, you know, and they're just, like, you know, like, you know, there's nothing they can do. There's nothing they can do for this woman, right? She... And then eventually everybody gets sick of hearing her cry and they're telling her to shut up and stuff. And I mean, just like, you know, you see people getting beatings, um, you know, g just getting treated like, you know, just unbelievably horribly by these owners and stuff. Like I said, the first guy, Benedict Cumberbatch, he was like, a, I think he was a, a minister or something. And he was a really like, he was a good, a decent guy, basically, for a slave owner. Uh, he treated him well treated him with a lot of respect, valued his, um, his input as, uh, as a builder. I think he was, uh, a carpenter or something working there. Uh, but the guy who, Paul Dano, Paul Dano, there was a really good cast in this movie. Um, he played this real, like, you know, mass, this real fucking masochistic, you know, white guy that, you know, loves to lord it over all the black slaves and make them feel like shit. And, and he took a particular dislike to this Solomon Northrop guy because I guess he saw how smart he was and, and how capable he was. And, you know, um, I guess it really rankled him. So, of course, he made it his mission to kind of make his life miserable and, you know, have him do all these tasks. And, and then eventually they get into a fight and he, this guy Solomon loses it and ends up beating him, which is, of course, like death for any slave, right? Uh, but then he ends up getting, this guy Benedict Cumberbatch comes to his, uh, comes to his rescue and they hang him. They're, they're about to hang him from a tree and he comes and cuts him down after like he's been, you know, hanging there for like a day. And then he gets shipped off to, to another guy who turns out to be Michael Fassbender. He's his next owner. And this guy, I mean, talk about a sick fuck. Um, Michael Fassbender was awesome in this movie. He was incredible. Um, he could not have played anybody more evil, more twisted. He was an alcoholic. Um, and one of the um, slaves that he ends up, uh, I guess, working with at this plantation or whatever... Uh, is this, this girl, no, it's a cotton plantation, sorry. And, um, this girl ends up picking like, you know, 500 pounds of cotton per day. And, and, uh, Michael Fassbender is like, you know, like he's, oh, this is my queen. This is my, you know, Nubian queen and all this stuff. And his eyes are crawling all over. So you just know that he's going to be like, you know, sexually abusing her and stuff, which he does a lot. And not only that, physically abusing her. I mean, it's like, this movie is just like, it's, one eyesore after another, really. It was, it was a really, really good movie, uh, incredible story, um, but it was, it hurt to watch. It was really painful to watch this. It was just, and actually it was funny. There was one scene in this movie that was like, the worst scene for me was, um, after this girl who, Michael Fassbender, uh, his character is like, you know, he's having sex with her and, at his, you know, whatever he wants and stuff. And she's working in the cotton fields and I guess being his little mistress or whatever. She ends up going to the, the neighbor's uh, plantation to get some soap or something. And he's jealous because he thinks that she's flirting with the, um, <clears throat> the plantation owner there. So he, you know, like, you know, says, you know, get over to this tree, uh, strips off her, her dress and he's, and he's about to whip her. Then he hands the whip over to Solomon and says, no, you do it. I want to see you do it. And Michael Fassbender's wife is this really sick bitch who can't, who's very extremely jealous of this black girl because she knows that Michael Fassbender's got a real heart on for her. And, uh, so he, she's always encouraging him to whip her and beat the shit out of her and stuff like that. So anyway, uh, he orders Solomon to like whip her and you know, what else can he do? Of course he has to do it. Right. And I think he even holds a gun to his head. He's like, you know, do it. And, um, so he does, but he's kind of trying to do it in a way that's, I guess, as, as, as less painful as possible. And they see this happening. So finally, and Michael Fassbender ends up, you know, just taking the whip and just, I mean, he literally takes chunks out of her back that how the way he whips her. It was just like, it was just, what can I tell you? It was like horrendous to watch. 
And after that scene, I didn't have a Kleenex with me, and I was crying, and I was going like this with my eyes. And then I noticed somebody off to, to my side was like going like this. And so I look over, and it's this lady, and she's handing me a Kleenex. And I'm like, oh, thank you very much. So I'm like, wow, that came in really handy. So, yeah, when I was leaving the theater, I'm like, thanks a lot, because I really needed that. Um, it was just, it was like awful, 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 awful. Um, so bottom line, would I recommend this movie? Yes, I would recommend this movie because it was great. There was great acting in it. Oh, I cannot uh, forget to mention Brad Pitt. Brad Pitt. How can I forget to mention this? Because he's really, even though he had a small part in the movie, he played a very instrumental role because he's the one who ends up getting Solomon freed uh, because um, he's this real like forward thinking. He's very much into civil rights and stuff. And he was telling Michael Fassbender, you don't have any right to treat these people like this. Uh, you know, you're going to have to, you're, you're going to have a day of reckoning and all this stuff. Um, and so Solomon ends up like getting, he's building a house or something with him and they end up talking. He's a listen, sir, can you please like, you know, send a letter for me to my master and like, let him know, not his master, but anyway, I can't remember how he put it, but anyway, he wanted him to write a letter letting, um, letting, uh, his people know that he'd been kidnapped and that this is where he was and for them to come get him. And so even though it was very dangerous and uh, Brad Pitt was, his character was putting his own life in danger, he did it for him. And that's how he ended up getting him freed and getting him back home. So yeah, Brad Pitt had a small part. He was only in it for maybe, I don't know, maybe 20 minutes, but he played a really, really decent guy. He played a hero, the guy that got, that got him back home. And, uh, yeah, so like I was saying, bottom line, would I recommend it? Yes, because it is a very, very qu high quality film, great acting. I'm sure you're going to see many nominations here. Uh, definitely for sure the main actor, uh, Chiwetel Ejiofor, he will definitely, I'm sure you will see him get a best actor nomination for this. Um, direction, probably, uh, best picture, for sure. I'm sure it'll get a, a nomination for best picture. Um, but it was just really a downer, like, you know, be prepared when you go to this movie to kind of cringe and be disgusted and repulsed at what you see, uh, because it's not pleasant to watch. But I mean, it is, it is part of history. This did happen to this man. And, um, he did end up writing a book called 12 years a slave. Um, the end of the movie at the end of the credits, it was saying that, uh, they didn't know what happened to him after he wrote the book, how he died or, or where he died. They lost track of him. He was, I guess, swallowed up by history or whatever right but uh yeah this is what happened to this guy you know he was living his life one day as a free man having a great life you know living in the lap of luxury and just i guess somebody spotted him decided hey this isn't right we're gonna you know get this n-word and take him where we want to take him kidnapping him and then in, he spent 12 years in hell basically you know just trying to survive get by day by day and um Wow, it was um it was uh it was a really tough watch, but uh yikes. So um yeah, I would recommend it. A very good film, but a very hard film to watch. Like I was saying, I, I felt it, it was it was like masochism watching this movie. You know, it just and when I was leaving the theater with my husband, he was saying, you know, watching a movie like that makes you ashamed to be white and I couldn't agree more, you know. Yeah, you know, when you, when you think about how, how these poor, um, how these poor people were treated by, you know, by white people, you know, it just, uh, it makes you sick, it makes you want to puke, you know, that's all I can say. Uh, but anyway, yeah, so that is my review of 12 Years a Slave. Um, probably I'm all over the place with it. I should have done it right afterward, you know, doing it a week later. I'm sure there's things I wanted to say about it then that I for, that I'm forgetting now, but yeah, the gist of it is is that it was a, it was a, you know really good film, but a really hard film. Okay, guys, I will see you later with my next movie. Thanks for watching. Bye.